Grace and peace, everyone. Welcome to The Truth Seekers with Randy McFoy. This is the channel where I help seekers of the truth find the truth in the Word of God. And I would like to thank everyone here for joining us today. And right now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at John chapter 21, verse 1 through 23. I'm not going to read the whole chapter right now. So if you would like to pause this video right now and just read the whole chapter so you can understand the context of what's going on. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I am going to teach on the kind of person God chooses as a leader. The kind of person, what God is looking for when he's looking to choose, um, not for salvation, but the kind of person he chooses for a leader. And we're going to look at Peter um, a little bit in this passage of scripture. So just to give you a little context of what's going on in the background of John chapter 21, this is after the death and um, this is after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We find Peter, we find Thomas, Nathaniel, we find James and John and two other disciples going fishing together. Um, they went back to what they were familiar with. They were fishermen already by trade and they went back to what they were familiar with. They went back to what they knew. Jesus appears to them. Um, and they didn't know it was Jesus. They was fishing all night. They caught nothing. Jesus came and he said, Hey, um, um, do you have any meat? Do you have any, did you catch anything? They said, no. They said, he, Jesus said, okay, um, uh, cast the net on the right side. They cast the net and abundance of fish came upon the net. Um, and the Bible was very specific. It was 153 fish that came upon, um, the net and it was so much um, even though it was so much, even though it was a multitude, the fish, the net didn't break, right? It didn't break. So John, um, the, the John, the apostle John noticed that it was Jesus and he told Peter, hey, that's Jesus. And Peter put on his garment and plunged into the water to go after Jesus. Um, then Jesus invited everyone to eat breakfast with them and they ate breakfast and they had this side, Jesus and Peter um, have this side conversation, which we're going to go to go through in another video. So the first point I want to make in this passage of scripture, John chapter 21, the kind of person that God chooses as a leader. Number one, God likes to choose people that are after him. God likes to choose people that are after him or that are after Christ. Okay. Where did I find that? Verse seven says this, therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he had removed it and plunged into the sea right? Plunged into the sea. So John was the first to recognize the Lord, but Peter was the first to act, right? John recognized it was the Lord, told Peter, and Peter put on his garment and plunged into the sea. Why? Because he was after Christ, okay? He was, he was after Christ, right? What compelled him to go after Christ? What, what, what made him go after Jesus? He didn't, he didn't see Jesus. So what, what made John, I'm sorry, what made Peter go after Christ? It says, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, <laughs> when, he, when he heard that it was the Lord, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the message about Christ. Or hearing the word of God, which is the message about Christ. Right? So Peter went after Christ based on what he heard. Based on what he heard. Guys, the more you hear about the goodness of Christ, the more you should go after him. The more you hear about his faithfulness is the more... You should be devoted to him. The more you hear about his sacrificial love 
and the and, and how much he loves you, the more you should go after him. Right? Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he plunged into the water. He plunged into the water. Right? He went after Christ. He went after Christ because of what he heard. It is good to listen to messages that will compel you to go after him. It is good to read books that would encourage your faith in Christ. It is good to have conversations that will inspire your devotions towards the Lord. When he heard that it was the Lord, he plunged into the water. Guys, let us protect our ears. Let's protect, let's cover what we listen to. Because what you listen to, what you give your ear to can discourage you from going after Christ. What you give your ears to can discover, discourage your faith in Christ. What you listen to can hinder your pursuit of Christ. Okay? When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he plunged into the sea. He swam to get to Christ. Let's look at another example. Let's go to Matthew chapter 14. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter 14. Now, I will encourage you to read Matthew 14, verse 22 to 23, right? But just the context of what's going on. Jesus made the disciples go into the boat um, to go into the other side. He sent the multitudes away. And as the, um, as the disciples get into the boat, Jesus went to a mountain by himself to get into prayer, to get into communion uh, with the Father, right? Now, when the evening came, there was in a boat and it was in the middle of a storm. Right. Um, um, there were waves and there were wind and it was beating on the boat. And it was there was in the middle of a storm. Jesus came walking on the water, walking on the sea, walking on the sea. And they thought it was a ghost. They thought it was a spirit. Um, and Jesus told them, you know, like basically calm down. <laughs> you know, it's I be of good cheer. Don't be afraid. Um, um, it is I. Right. Many interpret that when it says it is I. He's saying it is he, he say I am. Right. Um, which is the name of God um, in the Old Testament. Right. Soon as Jesus revealed himself, guess who was the first person to speak up? <laughs> Peter. Right. Peter. All right. Now. In verse 28, after Jesus reveals himself, verse 28, listen to what Peter said, guys, when you read the Bible, read the details. Right. Details are very important. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, if it is you. Command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And Peter had come down out of the boat. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the, that the wind was boisterous and he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? All right. Listen to Peter's heart. When Peter saw Jesus, he didn't just want to walk on the water just to show off. He didn't want to walk on the water just to just to walk on the water. Right. Peter said, command me to come to you on the water. He wanted to go to Jesus on the water. Many times when we read this text and we talk about Peter walking on the water, we just think Peter just walking around on the water. No. He wanted to go specifically to Jesus. And then the Bible reaffirms that again in verse 29. And after Jesus said, come, it says, when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. God chooses people to be a leader that are after Christ. Right. That are that are after 
Christ. Peter was willing to go after Christ even though it was risky. He was willing to go after Christ even though it was dangerous. The storm didn't stop. He was walking on the water, but the storm didn't stop. Peter was, walk, Peter was willing to go after Christ even if it seemed impossible. Command me to come to you on the water. Even on the water, I want to come to you. Even on the water. Now, what held Peter above water? What held Peter above water? The word of God. He said, command me to come. And Jesus said, come. Peter's faith in God's word kept him above water. Peter, depending on God's word, kept him afloat. Trusting in his word kept him from drowning. Peter was still in the storm, guys. But was walking on the water. Why? Because Jesus said, come. And he trusts that word. He trusts that word. He trusts that come. He trusts it. He trusts the word. And he was still going towards Christ. I want you guys to get this, guys. When the storms of your life comes, are you still going after Christ? When your marriage is going through hard times, are you still going after Christ? When you have financial hardships, when your children are going through difficulties, are you on your knees going after Christ? Are you going after Christ? Are you still holding on to his promise? Do you still trust his word? Are you praying his word? Are you speaking his word over the over your children's life, over your marriages? Are you still going after Christ in the storm? Now, Peter, as long as he looked to Jesus, he was okay. Right? He's walking on the water. We don't know how many steps he took. He could have took one step, two steps. He could have took 10 steps. But he was walking on the water. And as long as he kept his eyes on Christ, he was able to do the impossible. As long as he, took, he kept his eyes on Christ, he was able to do miraculous things. God, when you are after Christ, when you trust in his word, when you depend on his word, when you keep your eyes and your focus on him, when you keep your eyes and your focus on him, you can do marvelous things. You can do miraculous things. That's the kind of people God wants to use. Whose eyes are on him, whose focus is on him, who trust and depend on his word, no matter the circumstances. And we know that when Peter got, when Peter start to, to, to veer off and start to look at the wind and the, and, and the waves and, the, and it was boisterous and, and he saw the chaos, he began to sink, right? So, so he eventually failed, right? Um, he eventually failed, right? Guys, even if you fail, fail going after Christ. Fail going after after Christ, right? If you're in a relationship, you're not married, you're in a relationship and, and that relationship fails, that person don't want to be with you no more or you feel like you shouldn't be, let that be because you're after Christ, right? You're so after Christ that the other person is not, it's not going to work out. If you fail, fail going after Christ. If you get fired from your job, don't let it be because you um um you know you can't do the work, you're going to work late all the time, you're not showing up, you're always calling out. No, 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 no. If you get fired, let it be because you're after Christ. You're so godly, you're so honest, you have integrity, the people can't take it. Right? If your business fail, let it fail because you're after Christ. If you fail, let you fail because you are after Christ. And what I like about this text is Peter must have been, I believe he must have been close when he began to sink. 
He was so close that in the middle of a wind, in the middle of a storm, and it was probably noisy out there, right? That Peter was able to make a simple request, Lord, save me. And Jesus was close enough to hear him and close enough to immediately stretch out his hand to pick him up. When you're close to God, sometimes simple prayer is all you need. <laughs> Lord, save me. Sometimes you don't need these long prayers and, and these eloquent prayers. Sometimes you just need simple prayers. Lord, save me. And sometimes those prayers, when we have simple prayers and when we're close to the heart of God and we're close to the will of God, we'll know exactly what to pray. And many of those times we could get immediate results. Jesus said, the Bible says immediately he stretched out his hands. Sometimes we need requests, we need prayers to be answered immediately. Immediately. Go after Christ. After Christ. When he heard that it was Jesus, he plunged into the water. Right? Right? When he saw that it was Jesus, he said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. God wants to choose leaders that are after Christ. Let's look at another one. Let's go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And the context is this, right? So we have this multitude of people following Jesus because he just finished feeding thousands of people. And Jesus now want to test their motives. See, Jesus is a different leader than us, right? We like, to, we like people to follow us, right? I want people to follow me on YouTube, of course, right? We want people to follow us on Twitter and, 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 and social, you know, all these social media platforms. And we don't care why they're following us. We just want them to follow us, right? Jesus is different. Jesus care why you're following him. He cares about the motives. So here these people are following him and he preaches a message talking about he is the bread of life. He's saying that if you don't um, eat my bread and drink my blood, you will have no life in you, right? Um, and he's just hammering this down and these people are having a hard time. Um, um, with this message, right? Um, they're having a very, very hard time um, um, with this message. And the Bible says that they found that it was hard to understand. Verse 60 says, um, when they heard the message that Jesus was preaching, that he is the manna, that he is the bread, that you've got to eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, and you want, um, only then you will have eternal life. If you put your faith and trust in him, you will have eternal life. If not, you won't. And the Bible says that, Many of his disciples, when they heard this, they said it was a hard saying. That this was that 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 this was difficult to understand. Right? Um, they complained against Jesus. And Jesus was like, you know, do this offend you? So so they took this message offensive. They thought they thought this message was hard to understand. Um, um, they thought this message was difficult for them, it was challenging to them. So in verse um, John 6, verse 66 to 69, this is what happened. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So because Jesus was teaching a hard and challenging message, a difficult message, a message that was offensive, many of his disciples walked away. Many of them left. Right? And this is what I like about Jesus. Jesus. Jesus looked at the 12 and he didn't say, oh, guys, I'm glad you guys stayed, man. I'm glad you're not like one of like like those guys. He didn't say that. He didn't say, 
man, I appreciate you guys. You guys' support. I'm, I'm glad you didn't leave me. You know, you guys are here for me. I, I, I thank you guys. He didn't say that. When everyone left, he turned to the 12. He said, don't you want to leave too? <laughs> Jesus. That's Jesus. Jesus is tough. I, he's not he's not a punk like like how he's portrayed in movies and stuff, right? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is tough. He see all the disciples leaving and he turned to the 12, the one that remained, and challenged them. Don't you want to leave too? Right? And Peter's response. I could just imagine Peter looking around like, to whom shall we go? You have the words. Of eternal life. We can't go to Buddha. He don't have the words of eternal life. We can't go to Selassie or, or, or whatever the, his name. Right? We, we, you have the words of eternal life, Jesus. We can't go to the Hindu religion. We can't go to Christian science. Right? Why? Jesus. You have the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. So this is what Peter's response taught me. That those who are after Christ will stay even when the message is challenging. Some people let the message, the word of God that, that convicts them and challenge them to change. And it's a hard discourage them from following Christ. Not Peter. Not the disciples. Not the twelve. Right? He said, look, it might be challenging. It might be tough. You know, I might have, I might get rebuked. But you have the words of eternal life. Right? Those who are after Christ will stay after him, even if the word offends them. Right? Even if it hurts their feelings. I've been, at some, I've been at some services where my feelings was hurt because of the truth. I've been reading the Bible and some fe my feelings got hurt because of the truth of what the Lord was revealing to me in Scripture. How I was treating people, how I talked to people, you know, how I conducted myself. Right? Some things are difficult to understand. But Peter said, I'm not going to walk away. I'm not going to walk away. Right? Also what this teaches me. The people that left didn't influence those that stayed. Right? Jesus saw the people leaving and he was wondering if it have an influence on the 12 that stayed. Because sometimes when people, we see people left, we think, oh, maybe we should leave too. Maybe this is not a good thing. Peter said, no. They, they could leave. You have the words of eternal life. I'm staying. Guys. What if your best friend leave the faith? Will you still stay? What if your children leave the faith? Will you still stay? What if your spouse leave the faith? Will you still stay? What if your pastor leave the faith? Will you still stay? The person you look up to, what if they backslide? What if they fall into moral failure? What if, what if they become an apostate? What if they just walk away from the faith? Will you still stay? Whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. I have nowhere to go. Yes, those things may hurt us. Yes, those things should bring us to our knees. You know, yes, those things should bother us when these people um, leave. But it should not influence us to leave as well. It shouldn't. And that's the kind of person God wants to use. That are not easily influenced to leave. You may leave your church. Don't leave Christ. Don't leave Christ. Right? Don't leave Christ. Peter understood the significance of his words, the importance of his words, the words of eternal life, the value of his word. 
And I want to close with one last scripture. And that's found in 1 Samuel 13, 14. 1 Samuel 13, 14. But now your kingdom shall not continue. So this is the prophet Samuel talking to King Saul about what the Lord is going to do with David. Okay? So Samuel talking to King Saul about what the Lord is going to do through King, the next king, which is David. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people. Because you have, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Right? So God chose in David a man after his own heart to be a leader. I want you to catch this guy. So David was a man after God's own heart first. Then God chose him to be a leader. Then God chose him to be a leader. Right? Guys, don't wait until you have a title to be after Christ. Don't wait till you have a leadership position to be after Christ. Don't wait for uh, 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 someone in your church or someone to call on you to lead a group of men, to lead a group of women, to lead a group of children to be after Christ. No, be after Christ first. And that's the kind of person God wants to use as a leader. Right? There are some people, there are some ministers and some people that have uh, aspirations to be a minister or a pastor. And my first question to them is always, what is your prayer life and what is your study habits? They don't have a prayer life and you don't have a good study habits. How do I know that you're called to preach and be a minister of the word of God? If you don't have an appetite for the word of God now. Don't wait until you have a, 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 an assignment to preach next month before you start studying. No, you should always be studying the word of God if that's your passion and desire. Right? We don't need no more performers on the pulpit. We need people that are after Christ. After Christ. And that's the kind of leader that God wants to choose. A man, a woman that is after Christ. Amen? God bless you. Please like, please subscribe, please share, please comment. If you have any questions, um, um, let me know and let's engage. All right? Have a blessed one.